All right, welcome to this MBLAST tutorial video. And in this video, I want to tell you how this character setup works. So the first thing you have to understand is if we uh, open up this MBLS uh, folder here, let's actually go over to the lobby level and hit play here as a pie window. So uh, by default, let's talk about that first. By default, we have this character here. This is our demo character for this product. And if we hit C, we get this character customization panel. And in here, I can select different characters. So this switches out my skeletal mesh. So I can select the blue one, for instance, or the red one. And you see that uh, here it shows the one that you have selected. And then what I can also do is that we have got some accessories here. So these are some head slot accessories. So I can put this cone on my head, as you see, or I can put this Viking hat on my head, etc. So the way that this works is that inside of the blueprints here, if you go over to core, then we have the character folder. And inside of this character folder, we have our demo character here. So if we open this one up, then we see that this is that character that we give you by default. And inside of this character, we see that we have the mesh, which is set to our mesh and our animation blueprint for this demo character. And then we see that this mesh has a head slot attached to it. And this head slot is parented here to the head bone. And inside of this slot, you can then have those head accessories. So this cone, for instance, or this party hat, etc. Um, so the way that this actually changes is that inside of the event graph, we have these two server functions here. One changes our skeletal mesh and the other one changes our head uh, static mesh. So we have these two variables over here in appearance and these variables are set to wrap notify. So in case they get changed, so in case this mesh gets changed or the head slot gets changed, then we see that uh, the wrap notify function get called and all this simply does is that whatever you set this variable to, so the current skeletal mesh, it will set it as the skeletal mesh. And for the wrap notify of the heads, whatever you set the head static mesh to be, you switch the actual head slot static mesh on that. So that's how this one works in our demo character. And that will give you a good understanding for how you can set this up yourself as well. So uh, let's say you want to add some more characters in this example. Then how do you do that is that you can go over here to data and then you see two relevant data tables for this topic. And that is this one data table, available characters and data table, available accessories hat. So inside of the characters one, we see the eight characters that we give you by default and we see that they have some properties here. So this is based off of a structure and the structure here has the name property. So you can give your character a name. You can set the item image. So this is an image, uh, something with a resolution of 70 by 70 you can put any type of image in here and then you can set the mesh here so if i want to add another character i can simply go ahead and hit plus here then i can give that character a name so i can say character nine i can copy that name paste it in here and then character nine you can then yourself give this an item image so i can give this one let's do let's actually do the white one again so char seven so we got this placeholder uh, images basically. So let's do char, let's do the white one. So char seven, and then we can also select the mesh for this character. So here we go, the white one, and let's give it an ID number nine. All right, and there we go. So now I added a new character and then inside of the lobby level, if I hit play, then we see that if I press C, we now have character number nine, which is that white one that we just added. And if I click it, my character switches and that's that. And we can do the same for the head accessories. So here in the head accessories, we see that by default, we have the cone, hard hat, party hat, Viking hat. But if you would want to add more, simply hit plus and then add yourself some more of these meshes that you can put on top of your character. So I hope that gives you guys some good insight on how this works. Uh, let's actually take a look at the widget here that is corresponding for this. So if we click on widgets, then go over to lobby, then we have two widgets that are relevant here. We have the char character customization widget blueprint. So this is the one that actually shows you all of the options. It has a widget switcher with these two boxes in here. So this is the red box for the heads and this is the red box for the characters. And then inside of here, we populate the available characters based off of the data table. So if we have a look at the code, here real quick we see the setup here inside of the setup we load the available characters and the available accessories in this case the heads 
Uh, so here we can double click the available characters function. And here we see that we get that available characters data table and that we loop through it. And basically for every character that we find, we add one of these character customization items. So that's this widget over here. And this is the widget that you actually click to select your character. So if you click this button, if you look at the graph here, then we see that this button actually sets your appearance inside of the player state. And this server update here in the player state then sets your player appearance structure. So this structure contains both the character structure here and the head slot structure. And when this wrap notify gets called, this corresponding unwrap notify player appearance function gets called. So if you double click it, then we see that this calls a function here. And this function, we can then override it inside of the child class of this blueprint player state base class. So if we go over here to lobby, then we see that in the core folder, we have some base classes. So for the player, it's the base player state class. But like I just said, we want to override that function. So here inside of lobby player, player state, then we see that here on the left, we actually override that player appearance function. And if we double click it, then inside of here, we see that, that when that function gets called, we actually see that we have the player appearance here and that we cast to the demo character and set that skeletal mesh. And like I explained in the beginning of the video, this wrap notify then actually fires off the change and that's how we apply the appearance changes. So I hope this gave you guys a good overview of how the appearance works in this system and that you can easily change it for your game. All right, guys, if you have any questions, please be sure to ask them in the Discord and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.